So we've talked about lots of reasons why people gain weight, including uh, lifestyle, family, and not just the fact they maybe eat the wrong foods and don't move enough. Do you think there's any truth in the fact that there's been trauma in someone's life and this has triggered a reaction um, that has led to overeating or comfort eating? I think it can do. I think if we look at what eating is, it's something that's very pleasurable. Mm -hmm. you know, we enjoy eating, it creates a, a feeling of feeling good. You know, we eat something that's nice and sugary, it's got a certain amount of carbohydrate, you feel a bit sleepy, you feel quite nice and relaxed. Yeah. And I think that if somebody's had like a traumatic past, or if somebody uh, responds to stress in a certain way, mm -hmm. well, the concept of comfort eating kind of lends itself to it, doesn't it? You know, you've got to eat something that makes you feel a little bit better. Um, I think the flip side of that, though, is that in some cases, if people do that, it can then make them feel worse. And that creates a cycle, it creates a negative cycle. So if people stress eat, or they have like a traumatic event or something like that, and their coping mechanism is the food that they eat, and they start to create guilt responses in result of the food that they're eating, and that's a downward spiral. And you end up in this cyclic effect. You do, yeah. And as an obese person, do you think you're more likely to comfort eat than someone who's at a normal weight? Potentially. It's, it, I suppose it, it's the, what is underpinning that person's obesity in the first place. Um, which we know is a complex thing, it's more than just one, uh, one factor. I think binge eating as a concept is something that's complex. Uh, I think that somebody doesn't necessarily have to be obese in order to binge eat, um, but I think people who are obese are probably more susceptible to binge eating because of uh, a loss of understanding satiety and understanding appetite. Um, if we think that maybe obesity might have um, things that lead to it like a loss of satiety, um, a loss of uh, an over-receptiveness to foods. Yeah. Uh, what I mean by an over-receptiveness to foods, it almost tastes too good. You yeah. know, so you eat something, it creates a rush, you want to eat more of it, and you want more and more and more, um, and you don't understand when you're full. Yeah. If that is how your body is responding to uh, food stuff, and you're more likely to eat more of it. If we couple that with like a psychological trait that's associated with all or nothing thinking. Yep. So you're either going to eat all of it or you're going to eat nothing of it. There's no in between. Um, and as an obese person, you have that trait. Mm -hmm. Some people do, some people don't. Uh, and that is going to set people up for binge eat. When people come to me and they want to lose weight, I found that they've come to a point in their lives where it's a real tipping point and they've really, everything within them has decided, that's it, I can't remain how I am. This is the changing point and I'm moving forward. Do you find with the people that you studied, um, they sort of fall into weight loss or it's that definitive decision someone makes? I think the people that make a long-term success of it are the people that come to you in that position where they, they realise that there's that tipping point, yeah. where they've gone, to a, a, you know, they've gone through a certain experience or a certain period of time and, and they've reached their, their cut-off point. They can't be obese anymore. So Dr Dave, if we think globally, what's the most healthy country in the world and why? I think probably Japan. Uh, I think Japan is one of the healthiest nations in the world because of the, the food choices that people are eating. So what kind of things do they eat? Uh, lots of fish, yeah. um, particularly Okinawa, lots mm -hmm. of fish in Okinawa. Some rice, vegetables. Um, whole food meals that are prepared and eaten as a family mm -hmm. um, in an environment that's promoting physical activity, less, um, not industrialisation, but uh, more, more movement mm -hmm. is being part of the culture. Um, coupled with you know, healthful food choices means that they're probably not one of the lowest levels of obesity in the world. Um, that started to change in recent years. One of the reasons why it started to change is increasing westernisation, uh, fast food so outlets. Fast food and processed food. Exactly. Increased transportation, reduced movement, and yeah, one thing leads to another. Next thing you know, obesity levels are increasing. So, uh, nations that have traditionally um, embraced like whole foods, embraced that the family dynamic, and embraced eating um, meals that have been created, mm -hmm. less things that are automated, less things that are processed, less fast foods, tend to, have tended to be healthier nations. And in terms of Britain and the way that they are approaching obesity and reducing it within the nation, do you think they're going along the right routes with saying drink diet drinks instead of um, full fat coke, for instance, or have wholemeal pasta instead of white pasta? Are they giving the right messages to actually make a difference? I think, I think no, mm -hmm. because, because it's, it's centering only on food choices. It's centering on food choices that possibly aren't sustainable for a lot of people. So, you know, eat, eat, drinking sort of Diet Coke and, and, and Diet soft drinks, um, you, you're just swapping one thing for another. 
you know, you, you're swapping one fizzy drink for another. And for some people, that might give them a headache. You know, it's artificial sweetness can give some people headaches. And some people, it might even mess up their appetite regulation. Um, what we need to look at is the lifestyle factors that are underpinning weight. So we need to look at movement, mm -hmm. getting people out and about. We need to look at the, the, the messages we, we send around advertising foods about what is a, an appropriate meal mm -hmm. um, and what are the, the, the food choices that people can make that are costly, you know, that are cost effective. Mm -hmm. And so what would you suggest that the government does do that would actually make people behave, change their habits and live more healthy, balanced lifestyles? I think we need to get people moving. So we need to get people up and about a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We need to look at um, messages around food choice from a very, very early age. Um, you know, going into sort of primary schools and starting with kids that are very, very young, having some education about what is an appropriate food choice for mm -hmm. a certain meal. Uh, we need to look at the, the types of foods that are available, the cost associated with those foods, and the availability of foods. So if, if foods are cheap, if they're healthful, if they're whole foods, people might be more inclined to buy them. If mm. foods um, and fruit and vegetables are really expensive, if supermarkets are designed to, to not make you walk through that particular aisle, we're not going to buy it. Mm. So we need to look at availability, and we need to look at price. This is so much cheaper, for instance, to eat a burger than it is to eat a steak. Mm. Yeah. It's a lot quicker. Yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot quicker to go and order a takeaway or to buy, to buy a, you know, a burger or pizza out of a supermarket than it is to make, make something yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I talk about lifestyle, when I talk about uh, movement and, and things of that nature, I'm talking about physical activity, but I'm also thinking as well at the same time about, um, about, about work practices. You know, if people are working long hours and then they're stressed out and they've got a busy family and a busy life, and they're not making time for themselves in the morning. So more, many people do. So many people do. They're not gonna, not gonna have time to cook a meal. So we have to look at what is feasible um, and we have to look at the availability and price of food as well maybe teaching people to cook more quickly and cook whole foods that are then still tasty. Exactly, I completely, 